What's happening, everybody? We welcome you back to another episode of San Diego Prep Insider. This is going to be a bit of a hybrid episode where we are going to, like, the regular season will largely be over by the time most of you watch this. Some of you who are our eagle-eyed fans, like uh, the Vanderpool family and whatnot, shout out to you guys for being prompt and watching these episodes right away. We're sorry that this will be some hy hy hypothetical for you guys, but for those of you that catch us a little bit after we release this, this is our best attempt at, uh, there There are myriad games still to happen over the next 24 hours that will impact some of the playoff races, but not greatly impact them, so we're going to try and make this our opening round of the playoffs preview show. To get to the playoffs, though, we've got to talk about the last couple days and last couple game balls and last couple dingers of the regular season. Joining us, as always, I'm remiss in introducing them uh, any later than this. On the left is Bodie De Silva from Scorebook Live. You can download the SB Live Sports app for everything high school sports. Literally now everything. They have photographers. They have rankings. They have taken what you previously knew as uh, the standard and redone it. Change the game. Yeah, there we go. Um, and then on the right is Generalissimo David Ring. Um, he is the head guy at DR Player Development. If you want to get your swing right or if you want to break news about Eric Hosmer, he is your man. Aloha. Aloha. Uh, also, he is doing his best to pay homage to Jake Savicki. So in honor of that, let's, exactly. do, it. let's do it. We're going to zoom in on you and just say ball. Ball. I think that went pretty well. We will see. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so uh, let's get and, started. And Savicki's got a new podcast, so shout out Savicki on your new podcast with David Justice. It's yeah, pretty we sick. Had, we, had, we had the we had we had younger Justice on this show even before that. So Savicki's just <laughs> copying us. Yeah. Um, and to those of you that are gonna DM this to Jake, oh, we're not talk. No, we're not talking ish. Congrats on a great show, man. Um, Let's do, do, do we really have to do top 10? I mean, does it make no, the show I, any better? I was going to run through. <laughs> does it make the show any better? <laughs> no, no. Am I wrong to say it that way? Not, oh. not this week. I mean, let's, yeah. It, especially, yes, and I don't want to put in the work okay. to do it. I don't so, want to confuse people yes. too much because ultimately the, the seatings right. could be much no, but, different. But Dave but. is right. I, I am a bad uh, EP <laughs> if I just immediately torpedo all of his hard work. So uh, Bodie De Silva hit us with your, your already flawed because you did it five <laughs> days ago. Uh, top 10 yeah there we go rancher bernardo at number one that one i feel confident about the the broncos clinched the league title uh two days ago and they are going to be the one seed in the open division playoffs rancher bernardo back on top uh i had cathedral catholic at number two saints at number three saints took care of them in a big way yesterday uh so obviously would have that one flip now tory pines there at number four looks like they're going to slot in at the two seed in the open division patrick henry at number five granite hill six east lake seven carlsbad eight point loma nine santa fe christian ten um really tight battle in a couple spots one to make that last uh spot in the open division and two who's going to be the the top seed in the division two playoffs other teams to watch la costa canyon benita vista poway on a roll big time right now san marcos and el camino those were the my five just outside this week yeah, that's all the information i need right there christian that's that's every week i need that okay. all right i've got saints at number one i think they're the top team in my opinion RB is going to be the number one. You said an open seed. Um, I got Saints, RB, Torrey, Cathedral, Patrick Henry, Granite, Eastlake, and Carlsbad's having a heck of a season to finish here. Santa Fe Christian and Point Loma, even though they lost to Christian um, in a tight battle, which you'll hear get some game balls from that game later. Yeah, the that RB um, wave has rolled through. Yeah. To finish the season here, man, quite a solid team doing it all. Yeah, if if they can uh, take down Carlsbad uh, later on today, that would be twelve and three in league, which in that league is is a heck of an accomplishment. Always going in, I kind of figure ten or eleven wins will get that done. So if they can go twelve and three, that would be big time. La Costa Canyon, what's their what's their position right now? Yeah, so they are seven and six in league. They as of right now, they would be the last team in the open division. They got two games left against San Marcos, so really can't have any letdown. Need to win both of those. But the chance of a three peat is still alive. Yes. It is. And and I think is more more so than any year, 
you get in, I think all these teams are so even. I mean, it just there's going to be low scoring games. There's going to be extra inning games. I think there's going to be a lot of one zero two one. Who's got that reliever that could come in and give you a couple innings late? I just to me, there's there's very little difference between these teams, and so many of them are made up from from two leagues, so they've all seen each other. They all play good non-league. Um, yeah, this is this can be a fun playoffs because I really cool. it's gonna be really tough to pick. And, cut and to, Coach cut, Machado cut, cut to three weeks from now, yeah. and it's been nothing but offense and fifteen <laughs> yeah. run games. Exactly. And somebody <laughs> just will have taken that clip of Bodie right there. Well, that takes us right into Coach Machado and his. 600th, yeah, 600th win. win there's another in another episode we've i mean what what is going on this year this yeah the insane. milestones this year pretty every crazy. episode every episode it's insane 600 wins coach machado congrats pretty amazing he's the the first coach the only coach the only coach he's the guy i mean and i believe i heard him talk about the program the other day they were interviewing him and he talked about his favorite thing being you know the players bringing back you know their kids and and coming back to the program and and telling them about life and just it just seems like a really cool gig that and then and an amazing program he's established up there yes yeah, sixth uh coach in section history to to hit number 600 uh we talked about mike mitchell did it just about a month ago at christian um and manny hermosillo is still doing it at montgomery this will be his last year so three of the six amazing. still active Where's and manny hermosillo at total wise now I haven't added it since April, but it's in the 770 range. Manny, we got to talk. <laughs> my man. He, he needs 170 more for, Manny, for Sam Blaylock. So. Manny, how do you feel? Just hear me out. <laughs> Are you dead set on retirement? And if so, okay, maybe you don't want to coach at Montgomery anymore. Let's take you to a different team. Let's <laughs> let's move you down to D five and just rattle off a couple years of, of of extra 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 wins. But on a serious note, uh, the the to- we might have to give out this year, uh, like in, instead of or maybe just the maybe instead of coach of the year, it's like coach of the years plural because yeah. some of these guys have, uh, are going to deserve lifetime achievements awards. It's going to be hard to be like, hey, here's the coach of the year because so many different guys have done so many different great jobs. Mm-hmm. But also when you hit that many milestones, it's like. And you kind of want to tip your cap yeah, in that and direction. Those three specifically, you don't hit 600 by putting in 10 years. Like it's not, it's not some the sis, like high school baseball season is what? 20 something games. Yeah. I mean, you're allowed to play 28 regular season games and then you add on playoffs. So it's like knowing what that is. It's like coach Machado has been the only guy in school history. Manny's been at Montgomery forever. Uh, Mike Mitchell started at Coronado, then uh, majority of these wins here at Christian. So um, they've they've been there quite some time. Even when I when I posted about uh, Mike Mitchell, uh, Daniel Jeremiah from NFL Network gave a shout out of like this was my high school baseball coach. So cool to see kind of who it all affects, even in other different sports. All right, Dave, you got dingers for this week? Of course, Let's talk dingers. All right. We have some movement, which has been exciting. Yeah. I posted one on my Instagram today um, of a dude named Jack Circuit. We've we mentioned him a few times this year. Oh, yeah. I think we're going to call his bombs now. We're going to call him Circuit Clout. Okay. That's the new term for those. So I got Jack Circuit with the cir- another Circuit Clout, number nine on the season, uh, pull side Jimmy. I mean, this guy... What's most impressive about this guy is, yeah, he he's hitting home runs, but what I hear from his teammates and his peers is that he's the biggest leader on the team. He's got the loudest voice out there. He is constantly rooting for his players, and, and from what I hear, he is the one captain that every day makes a difference in all aspects of the game. So just wanted to kind of shout out Jack in, in, in other ways besides just – Highlighting how far you hit the baseball, man. <laughs> um, JJ Moran and Max Farrell, man. These both these guys hit two swamp donkeys, uh, like absolute l- long. Bo- like, <laughs> you've, have you heard that one before? I like it. This <laughs> this the swamp donkey term is something that I learned yesterday at, in a lesson with one of my eleven year olds. And I Googled it. It is actually real. 
on Reddit, there was like a whole forum on it. Oh, I don't know if Reddit is necessary. <laughs> that's the best place to trust on that. Um, okay, but anyways. But does, deal. Okay, a swamp donkey is slang for a large and powerful animal, often used to describe a deer with big antlers. Okay. So, like, it can be uh, a long hit baseball. So instead of saying uh, someone's a goon, uh, they're a swamp donkey. Deal. Yeah, exactly. You and Or you can letters. refer to it how, how far they hit the baseball. And and JG Moran and Max Farrell, they they are not getting cheated over there. Uh, Shane Miranda was a big reason why Saints put a whopping on Cathedral yesterday, fifteen to four. Cathedral's out some pitching right now. Um, one of their best pitchers, Trey Telfer, I think is injured, so they Correct. had to go by committee yesterday. And man, Shane Shane just went absolute yabo to the pull side. Is that that one's not as just like keep going and I'm just going to clip this in just we're going to clip all those words together <laughs> and we're going to just put it with huh. All right. I, I, I like how you're digging these. Yeah. Hell yeah. And then I mean the key with Shane Miranda this year is his lefty bat in the lineup. I think that's a big reason why Saints is going to be a, a, a huge defender in this open division. I mean he's put a few baseballs on disability this year. Let's be honest. You know what I mean? It's like You're on the injured list now. Yeah, this, <laughs> these baseballs are on the DL, and you know, pretty much today was more of a highlighting how much research I did on dinger slang than actual dingers in the county. So that's all I got for you guys. Deal. Um, can I throw one more at you and just say uh, Phoenix Brandt from San Diego yep. has deserved a shout out on the dingers all season long. Coach at San Diego has been. Not the most litigious about updating all of the uh, the max preps numbers. Right. So not a, a shade at anybody. Just saying, have to include him as a as a member of the Dingers Society. Bodie, game balls. Yeah, uh, Noah Batanko from East Lake uh, in their wins last week. A home run, two doubles, drove in ten. Um, East Lake has that thing rolling right now. Um, Avery Anderson from Poway, two hit shutout in their four nothing win against Mission Hills. Uh, Poway continues to rise. They've put them, it's not out of the question for Poway to make the open division. I think they're going to come up just short, but that's a team, get a first round bye in Division One, make a make a good run. Jace Cervantes from Fallbrook hit two home runs, drove in four in their win over Sage Creek um, as the intern makes, makes the way in. Perfect timing as usual. Um, and then Brendan Lewis, keep talking about him. Two hit shutout against Grossmont, season high nine strikeouts, drove in six runs during their three and a week. Um, and then wanted to go with a career accomplishment here. Uh, Zach Small from Oceanside, uh, up to 272 career strikeouts now, uh, which puts him top 25 in section history. Uh, some great names up there. Two more strikeouts. He will pass, pass Matt Bush. But, um, yeah, it's it's rare, um, rarefied air when you get in that, that nearly 300 career strikeout range. So Zach Small from Oceanside. We haven't talked about Oceanside too much this year, but... Uh, got some players up there, and and he's put himself up in the record book. Is there no other player that you? Is there no other player that you could have picked as a comp there? Because oh, it, not a comp. Just Matt Bush was next on the list. Okay. Who's who's one above <laughs> Matt Bush that he's chasing? Let's just as I have the record book when, up when here. We, when we set the standard as hey, Matt Bush made made okay. better of a career. When um, we set the standard though as congratulations, Zach Small. Your you're only a couple strikeouts behind a two-time felon. Like that's not necessarily <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, we got Cole Sulcer on great. there, who there we go. notably like, gave up that walk-off home run to Jorge Alfaro a couple years ago uh, wow. from Ramona. Cole Sulcer, Zach, we're trying, man. Trying <laughs> so hard to find <laughs> Ian Clarkin also up there. Ian Clarkin <laughs> uh, back Clarkin's pitching, dude. In. <laughs> yep. Hey, intern, on your own time. Uh, no, seriously though, Zach, congratulations on a ton of chairs. Yeah. Chair Factory. Uh, Dave, what do you got for game balls? Hopefully some Point Loma in there. Well, Little too much. as I get some love from <laughs> Little too much. the intern, uh, Patrick Henry beat Madison in, in one nothing in nine innings. I got to give a game ball to Dylan Foster. He was two for three with the walk-off single. The old segment, <clears throat> Dave's walk-offs. They're not doing it as much this year, <laughs> so I'll throw him some love. Cody Capaletti, man, dude. Another seven inning performance, three Recent hits. Recent St. Mary's commit too, so um, insane. That guy, you give him the ball. I mean, 
And he goes up to, you know, Christian asked me the other day if I had a pitcher in San Diego to give the ball to, and I, I, I said Grayson Bowles, and and guess who they gave, who Saints gave the ball to yesterday in that in that win. I mean, they, they gave him that game for your life, Grayson Bowles. Well, and, and Patrick Henry, the one-two punch, Capaletti and Talon Gardini. I mean, that's one that yeah. um, so I offense feel the same probably way. hasn't performed how they want, but, man, it can be tough to score runs when those two They've are pitching against you. shut out some amazing – Hitters. Yeah. I mean, I know the, the the offense is down this year. We've You're really giving seen, yourself a chance when you do that. So it's just he's one of those guys, and and got to give a shout out to Grayson Bowles. Like I said, man, another. I still w- think game for my life until he graduates. I'm gonna go with uh, either Zane Nordquist or um, no, <coughs> Mike is off. Um, game for my <laughs> life right now until they graduate. I got to go with either Zane Nordquist. Or anybody on the the Sage Creek pitching staff, <laughs> just out of keeping the joke going. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, I agree. A lot of really good pitching this year. Yeah, I agree. A lot of lot of guys who I'm assuming will have very decent shots that um, we see sometimes kids and they're kids, but we think, oh, like that kid looks big for 17. That kid looks big for 18. Very few people that we come across in our line of work are actually, like, athletic freaks of nature. They're just comparatively big. Like Rod Robinson from Lincoln, the running back. That's a that's a, that's a grown-ass man running against kids. Totally. But, like, someone like... <laughs> Did you see the former MLB player that's going back to college yes, to play yes. football? <laughs> that's a whole other one. But, but, <laughs> but to my point, someone, someone like uh, like any of the guys at Saints that you're talking about or, 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 or Cappelletti, those guys are not even close to what they're going to physically be yeah. when they're 19, 20, 21, 22. So to me... And just dogs on the mound. If they're already right? that good now, exactly. how good are they going to be once, stuff's gonna once, get they, better. once they really actually grow into 100%. their bodies in a way that baseball players, you, you don't project out like you, you think okay, he's already throwing eighty eight. Like he only has three or four more miles. And they have miles. no fear on the mound. These these guys it doesn't matter who they're they're pitching to, right? I mean, that's what I'm saying. Is the mentality is already there, and a lot of people will be like, oh, the stuff. Oh, he's already he's already hitting eighty nine. It's it's also about though how confidently can he hit ninety two all the time with other stuff, and that's the kind of stuff that develops in college. That if you look exactly like you say, some of these guys already have that it factor in a way that like. Of the seven pitchers that we mentioned in this episode, it would not surprise me if five of them wind up in major league bullpens. And I, I think Especially even more we're seeing with kind of the the COVID stuff and how that gave guys extra years. Palomar, these local junior colleges are loaded with with talent that we saw perform big time. Oh, Palomar a, right now two seed um, in the in the SoCal playoffs. So like you look up and down that Palomar roster, you're like, how are these guys at those places? It's just that COVID kind of well, turnover. I'll, I'll They're going to be on rosters. Junior college in general, with baseball, has always been a different beast yeah. than all other sports. Like you very nobody is going to go from playing JC uh, court, quarterback at at, uh, at at Mesa or Saddleback yeah. straight to the NFL. Yeah. There are people that will go from playing third base at Saddleback to being an eighth round draft pick in the major leagues because exactly. bleep academia. And I know I'm not supposed to say that on a high school like student athlete show, but sometimes a guy just needs one more year to get his bat straight and doesn't necessarily need to go study. <laughs> <laughs> what I'll ju- I'll give a quick story without giving the name. There's there's a current minor leaguer who certainly appears to be on the way to be in the majors quite soon. Uh, when he was drafted out of high school, I talked to him and I asked why you why are you deciding to sign with the team rather than take the scholarship? And he said, to be honest, I'm I'm done with doing school, <laughs> and it's worked out. He's he's making his way up, and oh, he will he will be in the major turn leagues the mics off for this segment. <laughs> He's going to get back to us on that. But um, <laughs> I would not, say that. All right, I'll finish there, my there, game. I would say that there was, to me, there was also that. a kid at Saints, or not at Saints, at um, Santana, like five, six years, years ago, who we who was a pitcher. And we were always like, why no college offers? Why no college offers? And he just took like a 17th or 20th, whatever round yeah. draft pick. And we're just like, oh, 
because no, he's just much more confident yeah. in what he can do with his career as as an 18, 19 year old in the minors than he can, uh, you know, splitting his attention and focus. Game, exactly. Game exactly. Balls. All right. Just throw the last few game balls out there. Brody Gundert, he pitched the gem for Christian as they beat Point Loma the other day. Or was that yesterday? 6 3 was the final. Um, Roman Gustin, I'll throw him a game ball, two for three with an RBI. And Xavier Farnham, another guy that hits a lots of doubles, two RBIs that game. So just wanted to shout that shout them out. That's a big win against a top ten team in the county, in my opinion. And Christian's done that a little bit this year. I mean, they've they've come at some of these top ten teams and and really played good D and and shut them down offensively. Yeah, the the Western League from top to bottom, we expected it would be good up top there. Point Loma's jumped up and kind of been a surprise team, obviously taking both games from Saints, but Madison taking Patrick Henry to nine innings and um, eventually losing one nothing. It's it kind of shows who it's it is. It's impressive for Saints to win the the, the Western League. Yeah, you know it it is a, a very very tough league. I mean, you could argue that's one of the toughest leagues. And to get to do it against their rival to kind of finish off the year. And, when and they still the are going to play. Is it the coastal one that's up north? Uh, yeah, there's two coastal. So that's the North County Coastal. The North County, yeah. I think those are the two yeah. in general toughest right now. Yeah, those, those two are going to have likely six of the eight open division teams, possibly seven. So, Good stuff. Okay, I'm going to baseball divisions. We can talk about some swamp donkeys. Let's talk about some. <laughs> let's, that, that needs to be a shirt. Uh, <laughs> just that say, let's talk about some swamp donkeys uh, with no explanation. Uh, we're going off of these are the power rankings on the CIF website. Correct. So, again, save that link, refresh it every two minutes. There's going to be a couple of games still played. We're going to yep. do our best. We're going to start at 5 AA and we're going to move our way up because the open and one still has a lot of more permutations. So here's what we are going to do. We did this game a couple of weeks ago where we said one or two or the field. I'm going to expand it to top four. Mm. And then just if you guys collectively want to talk about the top four, great uh, game play out who could win this. Or if you got a, a dark horse that you like somewhere else in that division. So at five double a, we've got Calvin Christian at the one rock Academy at the two Bonzel at the three victory at the four. This is going to be a little bit smaller playoff bracket compared to the rest of them. So, uh I'm pretty confident that one out of those four is going to wind up being our champion. Bodie, Dave, your guys' thoughts. Yeah, I would agree. Just looking at it, Calvin's going to be the one there, two through four, kind of jockeying for position. But you look through, they're 33 and five combined in league play. I think they've all made their market at who they really are. And Calvin certainly um, appears to be the the head of that there. So I would be very surprised if the winner um, did not come out of those four and specifically uh, Calvin. Dave Ring, intern, your thoughts? Yeah, I'll take Calvin. Pretty simple. Uh, on to Division 5 we go. <laughs> There's not enough room <laughs> for the intern. Um, number one seed, we got Orange Glen. Number two is Mountain Empire. Number three is Mount Miguel. Number four is Coastal Academy. This one is back to a fully sized bracket. Uh, I will say that 5 through 3, we wind up with teams in leagues that play mixed division schedules. So some of this looking at like well, a 10 and 16 Mount Miguel. Or El Cajon a, Valley, even in, yeah. A, a Either 9 and 14, those, yeah. yeah. Looking at some of these teams that have double-digit losses, and it's like, oh, well, you can't trust them. It's like... Or they're just kind of placed where they should, and they're they're they're, yeah. they're playing against some teams that, of course, they're gonna lose. Yeah. But you can become a better team. Like this is one of those ones where you can become a better team because you saw better pitching, and so when you get back, like so so three through, I would say that three through five, and then three through open, each kind of like of those ranges, you get some weird scheduling, and five is especially at it. So, Orange Glen, Mountain Empire, Mount Miguel Coastal are the top four in Division Five. Bodie, your thoughts on either one of those four winning it, or do you like a dark horse? Yeah, I, Mount Miguel and El Cajon Valley definitely both stick out to me there because it's what we talk about 
in so many years, these teams have played in in leagues with public schools in a mostly in a higher division. Yeah, those two are combined for one in eighteen in league. Okay, doesn't matter because they're gonna they're gonna go into a playoff division against many teams they haven't seen and certainly teams that are not in their league. So it's kind of a fresh start that way. And they're still jockeying among those top four. I mean, they're they're very close and still one game here or there. So um, I would go top four, and I would almost look at Mount Miguel and be like, okay, they're under five hundred. They've played more games, almost two times as many games as anyone else. I think they'll be they'll be tested and ready. So I would have Mount Miguel as the favorite. Do you bring your thoughts? on those four outside is, is or, Kearney or outside of those yeah. yeah I like Kearney yeah, I mean perfect the, in league so Kearney is a team that Bodie just described it's, they they play a lot of tough games they're prime for this so I think I'll take Kearney right outside of the top four I would hedge my bets and also say that like like Bodie had brought up El Cajon Valley that I like Kearney and El Cajon Valley collectively to do if we had four versus the field yeah but Mount Miguel has with with Matthew Barton and some of their guys, they have legitimate pop. They have real dudes. They have real athletes that get into a five, six game stretch of that playoffs. And if you just can get, if you can keep guys on base, yeah. Sometimes that's all you need. Like sometimes that's the win alone. On to Division Four, University City, Monta Vista, Imperial Valley Center, which, my goodness. Those schools are in four very different directions. Yeah. So geographically. Which is awesome. Yes. Geographically, this is an awesome one. Um, But just outside of that, you got Morse, San Diego, Esco, Sweetwater. Esco Charter. Escondido Charter. Sorry. Um, It's a... It's it, this is a good this is another one where it'd it be a not, lot of bus travel in these double it's eliminations. A, it's a, it's a lot of bus travel, but this could be another one where you could make a really good schedule. You could make a really good um, argument for one of those top four. You could also make a great argument for anybody outside of those top four. So, Bodie, I'm curious how you break this uh, Division Four race down. Yeah, I I have University City. I don't want to say overwhelming favorite, but there's a reason that they're that they've separated themselves. They're going to be the one seed. Uh, they've run through league. Um, 11 and five in non-league. I'd like to see that too. Uh, we know what they've got with Jack Clark having a, a bona fide ace on the mound that can shut anyone down. 200 um, career strikeouts. Yeah, now. exactly. They're uh, piling those ones up. So yeah, and and the bonus of those top four, they're not going to have to play that play in game. Maybe they want to get risky and use their number two pitcher in the first one. Then if you win your second game, you're off for the weekend. So um, yeah, definitely love the first four. Uh, love that it's really an all- directions of the county represented there and yeah university city i i have as a significant favorite here can i downgrade from significant favorite to i'm fine with them being the favorite but that Monta vista <laughs> is a really good team and yeah. if you look at common opponents they've both relatively beat the same people not necessarily by the same margins mm. but there's not a glaring to me that means that it, like if uc was beating them and Monta vista was losing to them then I'd be with you that it's yeah. a dominant one. But to me, that's one where you get into that situation of, okay, maybe, maybe Monta Vista doesn't win it, but they can force an extra game yeah. or something like that. Dave, that's your fair. thoughts. Um, I think Monta Vista is their best competition. UC has beat a number of teams on that list. <clears throat> they beat Morris at Petco. So I, th- I think, like you said, they've got the firepower, but, Monta Vista is their best. I'm going to take the top four there. I do think Morse outside of the top four is a solid team. They've got a lot of really athletic players, and I do like Morse. They can keep the run scoring down. I think they have the ability to pitch a little and play D, so look for them to kind of shine in that division too. All right, on to division. Hold on, got to cut back to me. On to division three. And then this is the one where, again, we're now at the top end of that one permutation of weird scheduling and sort of the bottom end of some of these teams play up, yeah. up. Some of these teams are now the low end. Some of these teams play in divisions where they are the, or leagues where they are the high end of it. And some of these play in leagues where they are the low end. So sometimes scheduling, again, gets a little wonky and weird. Valhalla. I don't know what happened two weeks ago on campus yeah. at Valhalla, <laughs> but they all woke up and said... Yo, bleep this. <laughs> We're going to become the best baseball team in San Diego. And since then, they have been absolutely like 
they, they have been doing Sherman's march to Atlanta and just burning a path 15 miles wide between the, between te- like Valhalla has become, they hit home runs. They pitch really well. They play good. De- like Bodie's kind of smiling, not but like, well, no, he's going to hit it with just, just the- specifically. And I'd seen them on the March 27th game. They were losing to Grossmont. They came back and won the next day. They lost to Santa Fe Christian 19, nothing. And they haven't lost since then. So what was it in that? That that nineteen nothing loss. They have four days off after the Lions tournament, and now they suddenly can't um, lose. In uh, that Augie streak, Garrido yeah. freaking they, came they out scored of coach sixteen on Mount Miguel, twenty one on Elkhorn Valley, fifteen on Elkhorn Valley, eleven nothing against El Cap, seventeen on West Hills, eleven seventeen. I mean, they're that's what I'm saying. This, this is, is our lives. Yeah. That's what I'm telling you. I mean, maybe my Sherman's march to Atlanta. You is guys have like seen that, dated, right? Of, dated of a, of a, but yeah, like, is that a good Augie? Yeah, impression. Hell yeah! All right. No, they they. Let's did. go. They, Something happened, huh? Bro, it's, it's like in a year where we were talking about pitching dominating, Valhalla just was like. All right. Some, like, someone oh, will just hit. Don't someone worry. tell us. <laughs> or me, I, 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 yeah. Like, like, let's go down the list. Did they drink? Did they drink the. Uh, the... She's confused. <laughs> really? It makes okay. no sense. How they scored that many runs. Um, <laughs> it doesn't add up. Okay. So Valhalla gets the one seed. Southwest El Centro is the two. El Camino is the three. La Jolla is the four. Another one kind of spread out. Another one very geographically nicely spread out. I love when the playoffs give us new matchups. Yeah. That it's not like, oh, like the, the Eastern and City Leagues are all uh, big time in here. I, look, at this point, I think you would be bad at baseball analysis. Hey, intern. <laughs> okay. Go, 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 go get a ball. Go get a ball. Go. Um, I think you would be bad at baseball analysis if you did not say that Valhalla was the favorite just off of like red, red hot and good at hitting. And you mentioned some teams that they beat that are in their division. So it's not like entirely they were just murdering D5 schools. But then you start to look outside of that top four and modern day has had some really good stretches. El Cap has had a couple of really good stretches San Ysidro is always a good, like, I I have to go with Valhalla as my favorite right now to win this just out of, I would be bad at picking teams <laughs> if I didn't. But I, again, this is one where I'm glad I have you guys here because I, I need your help on it. Bodie? Yeah. It, El Camino's up there. We know what they have when, when Zane Norquist is on the mound there. Um, they do have a head-to-head loss with La Jolla. So right now they would slide down to the four unless they can jump up to two. And I'm looking down at the bottom, too. This this race just to get in, Mira Mesa just inside, Claremont and Ramona exactly tied right now at 11 and 12, Mission Bay, Mission Vista right outside. So these last couple of games could provide movement because, remember, it's a 12-team bracket, and those first four are going to get um, that first round by. So um, I think I'll side with that top four because I like – I like what I have oh, I there. Mean, if we're just picking top four versus the field, I will absolutely take top four because El Camino to me is the the no doubter just because Zane Norris yeah. and Damian Lopez have a road win Damian. over Saints yeah. from last week. Yeah. So like clearly they're clearly they're happy to to go up and play with with whoever there. Um yeah, this is a this is a fun one that that I think is really tough to pick a favorite because just Valhalla has obviously turned on a switch, but is it just they're comfortable with their league opponents right now? Whatever it may be, um, it's going to be a different game here. So, Dave Ring? Yeah, it's hard to go with some of those lower teams, but I, I do like Mira Mesa. They've got a new coach this year, and El Capitan is hitting absolute bombs. And then the one team that is getting a she little bit... What, she, the intern did what you asked. Yeah, thanks for the <laughs> ball. The team that I think might do some damage here, right at the bottom here, is is Claremont. They've got Christian Garcia, who on any given moment could possibly, you know, end a team's run. You know, he could throw a seven-inning shutout any any given moment. So you, you can't count Claremont you like, out. You like Christian Garcia in that opening game for Claremont, setting them up on a nice little, 100%. A nice little run. It's kind of like the Paul Skeens debut today. or coming up here. What You get two guys in that – I mean, you get two pitchers now that can – Set the tone. The Pirates are going to be looking nasty. It's going to be impressive. So, Pirates compared to the 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 Claremont Hill, Hill Hilltoppers over there. That's the little league team. <laughs> <laughs> the Hilltoppers, the Chieftains. 
Yeah, so I, I do like some of the teams. I just got to give them some love down in the bottom there. It's going to be an interesting bracket. I really have no idea what's going to happen in there. La Jolla's in the middle. They're like number four team in there. I mean, they could do some damage. They've got a bunch of really good uh, juniors, and so they could carry this into next year too. Their, their senior class next year is going to be pretty impressive in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, it's hard to tell at this point. Uh, on behalf of our uh, intern being here again, we can move on now to mm-hmm. Division Two and talk about her favorite team, the Point Loma Pointers. They are exactly. She turned around for. <laughs> look at that. She turned around for Point. You like Point Loma? You like Will Sanford? Yeah. Why do you never bark on command? It's only ever when we don't want you to bark. Throw the ball for her. That's the only way to get it, get rid of her. Um, <laughs> This the mic gets tangled on some feet. A comically bad throw for a guy that throws batting practice for a living. <laughs> Dang um, it. Okay, so Point Loma, SFC, Maranatha, and then kind of... We're tangled. Kind of surprising, not surprising. There we go. It's like a, watching a bunch of baby giraffes trying to clean another baby giraffe. Uh, Point Loma, SFC, Maranatha, San Pasqual. Yeah. San Pasqual, kind yeah, of on the vol- kind of on there. the Valhalla warpath right now totally. of picked up a lot of steam in that second half and has a lot of guy a lot of guys playing right now um who are under the radar that deserve probably more love than they have gotten this season because they have caught fire late i mean this is a loaded bracket you look too past that five through eight and i know i said i was only gonna do one through four but five through eight is benita mount carmel helix madison yeah he- helix Scripps and madison Ranch are two i look at of knowing that they're going obviously madison we know what the western league is helix in a in a league where grossman and granite are at the top of that one they've taken them on um for the last few weeks so if you can get that that play in game, you got a chance. It's double elimination. It's what we love there. Um, and Point Loma and Santa Fe are going back and forth. They each have a loss this week, so that's kind of um, helped keep them neck and neck. So it'll be be interesting what they each do in their last game. Who can who can get the leg up there? Yeah, well, we know how Benita Vista is so good this year, man. What are they like? Seven, yeah, seventeen nine. Seventeen and, and nine. I mean, their record is impressive. So outside of that top four, I mean, if, if for me, I would take. I would take the the outside list there. I mean, it's just there's too many teams there that you can't bet against Scripps Ranch. They'll beat anyone at any on any given day. And one more, I'll add their Coronado there at number twelve. So right now they're the right. last team in. Like if you got a Coronado Benita Vista play in game, Coronado's got multiple Division One guys. I mean, it where and Max Benita Murray, Vista got uh, Sean Ishmael Cannon, like, Castanon, who throws yeah. like ninety three too. So it's that game is going to be. Throwing some horses. If yeah. there's a point, yeah, Coronado can there. just get in. It's going to be real close. It feels like this division is going to be, no matter what, no one's going to run away with it. Because yeah. even though those top four teams are very talented, there's just too many big time matchups that you got to get through to win a championship there. Um, ball's way gone. Ball gone. Ball, ball <laughs> gone. Sorry. Um, look, we never promised that we were the most professional show. We just have fun with it like no one else does. Um, uh, look, what does it come down to? Does it come down to can Will Sanford throw a couple of shutouts and 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 get Point Loma their big wins? Does it come down to who just can hit more home runs? Like this is one where I think that the the fog of war confuses me. Well, this is where injuries be, come in too. Is, you this, can see like some pitchers have gotten injured. These guys, these guys are horses, man. They're they're able to throw six innings, which is telling me that they're. And you know, Madison and Helix both have a dude. Getting they good have rest. At least one dude yeah. who can throw a whole exactly. game. And like you said, Coronado and Benito. Like this is one where it's real. Like the last, the next twenty four hours are going to actually potentially have some impact because who gets the five seed versus the eight seed versus the three seed versus the seven seed, like, could actually match up. Yeah, you've got Classical at number eleven who already has a win over Santa Fe this week, and that probably boosted them just into playoff position right there. So that it did. Okay, let's close this out with an attempt at breaking down for people what Open and D1 is going to look like. As of right now... Chaotic. (laughs) As of right now, Thursday, May 9th at 11.50 a.m. We are recording this with... We know the top two. With Yeah, the top two are locked in, and then past that, it's chaos. So here's where we're at as of right now. RB, Tory, Saints, Patrick Henry, Granite, Cathedral, Carlsbad, LCC. That is one through eight. RB and Tory are dead set locked in. There yeah. is no in that order. They're in that order. There's no getting them out of there. 
Saints, Patrick Henry, Granite are safe-ish, pending that they don't completely um, have worst-case scenario type things happen. There's going to be some permutations of maybe Saints is three, maybe Saints is seven, maybe Saints is five, but most likely Saints, Patrick Henry, and Granite are in, yes? Yeah, and in the current order, Granite would flip Henry based on the head-to-head. But yeah, I, I feel I feel really the top six, we'll I would s- say, should feel very comfortable um, about okay, being so we'll locked Okay, so throw in. Cathedral then in yeah. there also. Yeah. So right now, the remaining race is Carlsbad, LCC, Eastlake, Poway, San Marcos, yeah. like a five teams. There could be some permutations there. So I yeah. don't want to sit here and play um, play out all those scenarios that wastes everybody's time. I will say this, though. Let's do it one through six. Do you see a team in that open division at one through six that's going to run away with it? Or no. are, is this a truly topsy-turvy year where like you said if lcc can get in at that eight anything's open yeah i there's i would say with lcc and cathedral right now i would have some concerns about injuries to pitchers um they both are without who they've been throwing as the first guy in the rotation right now uh cooper walls from la costa exited their start two weeks ago and hasn't pitched since um we talked about uh trey telfer from cathedral not having pitched in in a little bit here so i'd be concerned there but otherwise it is so even so many of these teams have played each other uh whether it's league whether it was lions whether it was non-league um i just don't see anyone running away doesn't mean anyone can't just maybe rb goes in and they've got the pitchers and every game's 10 nothing i just don't see it that way um i think these are all going to be really tough games you want that home field advantage you want that last shot and then at bat um, that walk-off scenario, um, and favoring the teams that have that those relief arms. The longer your starters can go, use their 110 pitches wisely, and yeah, for um, sure. it's yeah those <laughs> those Saturday elimination games here in in nine days are going to be real fun because there's going to be some good teams that that are going to be going home real early. What I do know is Tory still got pitching. Yeah, um, Saints, RB, Patrick Henry. I mean. It, it, in my opinion, we're listing the teams with the best pitching right here, and 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 there's a reason they're Patrick up at the top. Henry yeah. is going to be, in my opinion, a really tough team to beat in in a bracket play. Same with Tory, who's got three fresh arms that they can use at any given moment. So I think it's like Christian said, it's going to come down to pitching. It's going to come down to to who has the fresh arms, like Bodie said, and. But I, I, you can't count out those other teams so, because so Bodie, they got Bodie, dogs. Give us, give us a right now what you think. This, who do you? Who is your best educated guess at who are the seven and eight seeds going to be? So, Carlsbad and Lacosta Canyon. I both. I think they both make it in. Lacosta has two games left. Even I at, don't, we don't need the whole explainer. Yeah, just, just, yeah I so. think I think and the the furthermore why Lacosta should feel even better if they do end up a spot behind Carlsbad they would flip them. Um, that's weird. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, so we're con- so, so I, I so feel pretty confident that, that so we're going to see Carlsbad Lacosta as the as the final two in there, and okay, they'd so end up flipping their order. Let's do that as the seven and eight. Yeah. And then let's talk East Lake, Poway, San Marcos, Grossmont is right wow. now the four, but Country Day, Del Norte, Sage Creek, Mission Hills, Christian Monk, like man, <laughs> the only team that I think. And I, I, I hate to be that intern. You're, you're being a little extra today. Um, the only team that I think I would, I, and I don't even mean this as disrespect, but the only team that I would kind of be like, hey, maybe they, maybe we can consider them the underdog, and that would be Steel Canyon. Can we untangle you? Oh, no. Oh no! no we're oh. Away. Microwave uh, microphone almost. Yeah, ran. no, I, I think that's and, fair. And, and yeah, so, and that's not a, like just look, Steel Canyon. It's a it's a good year. It's no, a really it's, good year. You, you work your way up. It's what we saw with Canyon Crest last year. It, it's it's how these current formulas work. You work. You want to be up in Division One. So it so locks you into at, a spot. So but at that's this, fair. Then, East Lake Poway, San Marcos, Grossmont, man, or the field. <sighs> I I don't want to say the field. But oh, we we have the gate. <laughs> um, man, there's so many stacked teams. Yeah, in there. I, it's I, unreal. I don't want to say the field, but man, you look through and you know that Del Norte's got the ability. They've won 
games there. Sage Creek has that postseason experience when they when they put it all together last year. Mission Hills can play with anyone in the county. I truly believe that. Uh, Christian has that win over Point Loma. Montgomery, it's going to be Manny's last year. You know they're going to give everything they have there. Santana has a one nothing win over Granite from from two weeks ago. So ultimately, yes, I I would I would side East Lake up there. East Lake Power, yeah. I mean, I think I'll take that top four, but man, that that five through twelve is going to be a lot of fun. There, there, are, there are so many good teams. I, I think this is probably as deep of D one as I can imagine, and partly because open has been so even throughout. Um, we're going to see some great games, Dave. Fantastic. Your thoughts on um, the knockdown dragout brawl that is going to be Division One this year? Division One comes down to in my opinion, some of these teams right here, like La Jolla Country Day, Del Norte. Del Norte played Torrey Pines so tough this year. They beat him two out of three and lost the third on a walk-off hit-by-pitch. So, like... On a walk-off <laughs> hit-by-pitch after there was a runner on first. Yeah. They intentionally <laughs> walked two batters. And then the next batter plunked the dude in the dome. I mean, if you're going to lose, that's Game a over. <laughs> and the... I mean, but Del- they had previously tied the game on a stolen base at home. I really, so yeah. really like Del Norte yeah. a lot, and the same with Sage Creek, right in that middle of the pack. There, I'm going to go with the guys in green. I'm a green guy. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, so so Poway, Pow, you're voting for Poway. Then. Yeah, yeah, I got them all. <laughs> and see how easy of a Sage hasn't guess played their is? their best as the season's gone on. But look, they have a nine nothing win on Carlsbad, a one nothing win on Tory, a four two win on on Santa Fe. Like they a two one win on East Lake. Like Sage has proven when they put it together, they're the they're guys there. in green. So, man. So, so what I'm hearing is hedge your bets on teams that have green. So yeah. East Lake, <laughs> how, how yeah, East Lake has that little how green. How much percentage of all, green? All green. Does a little like green and gray. Go, green and gray. Okay, so you got green. you got Poway locked in, Del Norte, Sage. Um, well, Del Norte also has like 19 colors that I've seen different. Like the, the San Marcos, fo- can you add honorary green? The, the football team has military uniforms yeah, they, and America you uniforms. You got a light gold. And, yeah. Um, so from what I'm hearing from you guys is it's almost going to come down to coaching in that it's going to come down to who matches up. Yeah. What, ro- what and more chemistry and yeah. Chemistry and, and, and coaching versus like, it's going to come down to if they're throwing a lefty, does your team have the ability to hit lefties yeah. and, or for your coach to adapt more than arbitrarily. And just that's saying, why I say oh, these teams Poway is hot. They're going to, they're going to. Yeah. And, and I want to see, do any of these coaches take a chance where in the play in game, do you not throw your ace and get that, greedy that's, that's what in is that, the, in that first round game? Do you, do you throw your number two and say, okay, I want my, ace ready for the second game because if we win we're off all the way till next week and we can reset our rotation so i I think we'll ultimately see that because i think you're going to need to kind of press the right buttons to to put it all together here but man these these two divisions are so so even all right lots Um, of swamp donkeys in those green teams man (laughs) nothing but Guys, nothing but, hit nothing but green swamp donkeys <laughs> hitting Yabo tacos. Um, uh, yeah, while Rizzy. This episode up, was fun. Rizzy up, Livy done. I got um, one fact. One fact before we go. Hit me with it. Our guy Jack Circuit, man, his uncle is Jarrett Wright. He played in the big leagues for ten years. Pitched Game Seven of the World Series. Oh, there we go. Twenty-one years old. Can you not hear that? <laughs> 21 years old, he pitched Game 7 of the World Series. Um, his grandfather, Clyde Wright, pitched eight years mostly for the Angels through his first no-hitter at Anaheim Stadium. Through the first no-hitter in Anaheim Stadium, July 3rd, 1970. And this is Jack's uncle. What a cool thing. They came out and watched him play. What a cool family. I mean, got some pitchers in the through in the big leagues, maybe – Maybe big things for Jack coming, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Fun fact. Toy. I have uh, I have often closed out or started interviews with players this year um, as, hey, just so you know, this is somebody that we might be playing as an MLB The Show. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah maybe a prospect card even early on. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, man, I downloaded a Spencer Jones card a couple of days go. ago, and he was an LCC kid, Mickey Moniak, LCC kid. and <laughs> Jones is an absolute dog, man. He's hitting – Incredibly. Won, won the home run derby at, at Petco Park back yes, in the day. he did. That's all I'm saying. All right, we've gone well over what our normal episode is, so we <laughs> that appreciate was a good everybody one. that stuck around. We will be back for the playoffs. We'll talk to you guys soon.